Well, let's have a look at this third study. It deals with a slightly different problem than the first or the second study, and namely, it's the sustaining of single notes in the melody with the pedal while providing a gentle accompaniment below, for instance. Something along those lines. So all the same problems are there. We have to prepare the position. We have to remember to sit all the way to right around, I would say, C below middle C, as far as our center point, or where the nose is pointing at. And then um, once you prepare this first position, you have to obviously remember that the thumb will be playing on black keys pretty much throughout the whole study with a couple of exceptions and so it makes sense to put the second finger pretty deep inside the keyboard so that you don't start like this and then have to move in you learn to play with this sort of position second finger deep inside fifth finger slightly past the black white border line and the first finger extending as far as possible towards the A flat. Obviously your hands might be smaller, it, in that case you'll have more uh, distance to cover with the thumb, but it's, it's all the same process really. So we begin. Right, so as soon as this first interval, the melodic uh, part is uh, proclaimed, with the pedal, the hand makes sure to move or slightly pivot, rotate, or deviate so that the thumb lands upon A flat. Now, besides doing that, I would encourage you to instantly move the third finger to the F as well. That seems better. Also, the fourth finger doesn't have to be exactly on top of the A-flat, but it still should be trying to point that way. So that would be the first position shift that you would try to master. And that pretty much gets you all the way to measure 2. Now you notice that I articulated the first uh, interval with quite a bit of force. Right, so more force to the C, maybe a little bit less to the E flat, something like that. But the important part is it's a nice, clear mezzo forte, forte sound, which is contrasted by the piano sound. And that difference will project the melody quite well. And will uh, still provide the harmonic accompaniment, but it will not be overbearing. A little pedal change on the third beat there. Try to keep the second finger on E flat there if you can. Now, before you move into the uh, second measure, I would recommend learning that move. So as before, I, I slightly lied. You're not quite set to go into measure two after that initial shift of position. First of all, of course, you have to move the thumb, obviously. But then after the A flat on beat four, I would make sure to do that. Thumb moves to B flat. Um, all those other fingers are mostly in place. The fourth finger moves down to G. So those are important things. So before you start measure two, check that this is your position. You should be able to cover the notes in beats one and two. Okay, so then we continue. 
that. So immediate leap down from the staccato note. So between beats three and four, a slight shift occurs, but you can almost keep your finger three on E flat without letting go. Now, if you've got a smaller hand, do let go. Making sure to position first and second fingers on, on the appropriate notes there. Okay, so that's uh, what measure one is like this. And then measure two. And now, of course, immediately, boom. So, uh, as I, I think, covered uh, in the previous uh, studies, I think the first and the second, whenever you see the slurred pair, make sure to treat the last of this pair as if it's a staccato note, basically. Uh, where was I? Yeah. So beat four coming up. Just leap right away. There is no reason to hold it. The pedal is doing the holding for you. And so notice that when I pre-position for measure three, I should feel that my hand is configured in pretty much the, the same way as when we first started before measure one. Thumb extending towards the A flat along this black white borderline. Um, five is kind of at this 130, one o'clock angle, too deep inside the keys. Now here, before measure four, the only difference is to pre-position finger four on G flat, not on G natural, like you did in measure two. So same thing happens there. When you land on the last beat of measure four, you leap. And I would really encourage you to maintain the same positioning of the thumb as you did in the first line. Right, it's still on the white black border so that you don't have to um, actually I just realized I didn't do something. I'd like to do it right now. I'd like to turn on my pad. So yeah, stay with the thumb on this white black border. And then of course, as you glide between different positions, do take care of a couple of important things. So once you find beat two, make sure the third finger is on A flat. But uh, the fourth finger, don't try to squeeze it over towards C flat. There is no reason to do that. Just let it rest naturally. And then after beat two, staccato note, that's when you reposition and you're able now to play three different beats. One, three, four, and then five, two, just like that. And then once you get to beat one, you could potentially do this and then reposition for beat two. But I prefer to do advanced preparation whenever I can, and I think that's a good idea. So in fact, on beat four of measure five, do this. Right away, treat that C flat as if it's a staccato note, because remember we covered that in previous videos that the last note under a group of slurred notes is basically a staccato note. So use that to your advantage and move into the new position for beats one and two of measure six. Now here, I decided to go with fingers four and then three where you just keep moving the thumb down Like this, right? Still gliding along this black-white border. It is obviously possible to do this kind of, um, 
shall we say, position change with moving the five over. But for some reason, I decided to only do it once in this study and instead practice this whole idea of pivoting around finger three and learning to glide the thumb uh, down and up as necessary. Right, so you'll notice that I'm still maintaining the contact with um, G flat with finger three. And if your hand doesn't allow it, you might do something like, right? You're still kind of aiming to find that G flat quickly. And that allows me to find this position in measure seven much quicker than if I did it this way. Right, if I move the fifth finger to G flat, suddenly it feels a lot further to get back to this 2, 5, G flat, E flat position that we need to find. So anyway, for measure 7 and into 8, we've got basically the same situation as with measure 5 and 6. So let's look at the end of measure 8. Now here, yes, you would move to 5 and 2. But again, I'm making sure to keep the thumb on the black-white border. I'm not doing this thing and then doing this thing teaching my fifth finger to play this 50 degree angle or two o'clock angle and allowing for a very smooth tr quick transition for the thumb to find the E flat. Now here I'm pivoting around finger two. Finger two is anchored on B flat. Now coming up is measure nine with a slightly different type of material. And here, that's the kind of positioning I'm asking you to do. All right, so I'm now playing down below, below the middle C register, mostly, and if you find that this stretch with three on A flat and two on C is a little bit too much, then you can always exchange the four with five. And that's absolutely fine as well. Now, if you can push yourself a little bit and you don't feel pain or undue strain playing like this, this will possibly increase your technical capacity a little bit, but it's really not a big deal. Now again, just like in the first two lines, I want to articulate the melody. I don't have anything written down in the top staff, but melody is obviously those top notes. C, C, D flat, C, E flat, D flat, C, C, D flat, C, A flat. And then we get to the end of this line. Now, I'm doing a very similar performance idea as in the first two lines. I'm articulating the top note. I'm trying to play these bottom notes of the chords a little softer. So remember that trick of, let, let me do finger five just to play around with these fingers instead. So I'm holding down C and then I'm adding the other notes quite softly. So that when time comes, oops, you can basically play all three voices together, but the top no note is still going to sound louder. Right. But more important than that is to make sure to not hammer out those thumb notes. Pianissimo. Pianissimo. the third finger, reach the A flat, 
required. And on that last A flat, we're about to do a little modulation. So different fingers, two, three, five. Two, four, five is also possible, but if you can reach two, three, five, do that. And you slide down to two, four, five. All right, and now we're suddenly in the territory where the thumb needs to play on the white keys, which means we are quite correct to keep um, the thumb fingertip on this border now, on the edge of the white keys as opposed to on the edge of the or on the edge of the black keys on the bla uh, black white border. So slide out here for measure 13. You can almost find that G, right? It's right there. Kind of pivoting around finger three again. And then bring the thumb right back to B natural. At this point, uh, the rest of 13 and measure 14, you're dealing with four note chord positions. So beats three and four, then beats one and two, and beats three and four of 14, and then measure 15. Therefore, think about it in those terms. When you get to beat four here in measure 13, you leap like this. Right. In other words, don't just prepare fingers 5, 3, 2 and think you're done. Think about it in terms of the block chord. 5, 3, 2, but also 1. But here, just the second finger moves to prepare for measure 15. Big leap here. Still on the white keys. But at the end of measure 15, we've talked about this diagonal inside the keyboard position shift before, and this is exactly what you do here. Right? You bring the thumb back to this black-white border, and you try to play this fifth finger in this sideways manner as well as the other long fingers, so that the thumb has the closest distance to the E flat, right? If you play it like this, there's a lot more motion for the thumb to, to do, and this is not the, the most, mm, let's say, uh, economic way of playing the piano. All right, and the last beat of this measure is G, quite close if you pivot around E flat and then you come back to measure one there it is and you do all the same now we get to the coda sign and now you're about to play beat four before the coda sign one one and three you're you're after that you're going to the middle C with finger five of the coda so that's the move. Again, the thumb stays on this line. Now, this is a very low uh, range, and I'm finding that this is a little tricky for me. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to shift my position even further to the left so that my nose is now centered across from F below C, below middle C, right? So so this becomes a lot easier to find. Now luckily 17 and 18 is copy pasted in 19 and 20, so I'll skip through those and in measure 21 that's the furthest down that you're going to have to go, A flat. Now from this A flat, I can just move and find those notes by feel, or you can literally do this. I think it's a little more clunky to do this thumb under idea, so I would just practice doing this way. Now this is the final line 
you're probably welcome to just memorize a couple of those shifts and look down to check that you actually landed there just fine. Right, five, four, two there for the final try, and then I have to lean over to reach that top pianissimo interval. Well, so that takes care of this study. Um, not a very fast one, quite smooth. Maybe towards the end there would be nice to diminuendo, but if you feel particularly boisterous and you like to play it louder, that's fine as well, as so long as the melody is clearly heard above the accompaniment notes. All right, enjoy. <laughs> 